Welcome back everyone, this is another Chris Chorus with your host Chris, and in this video we are going to cover the Extract Text Webpack plugin. Now, what is this plugin and what does it do? The Extract Text Webpack plugin is a webpack add-on that will tell webpack to export our CSS into a separate file rather than inlining it as webpack normally does. If we look on over at page speed recommendations by Google, you'll see that they recommend inlining small CSS resources. Inlining your CSS allows the browser to render your page without having to wait for an external CSS file to load. However, it should be noted that this page speed improvement technique is only worthwhile if the amount of CSS you're inlining is very small. If you're making use of a lot of CSS, then you're going to want to place it in a separate file. A lot of inline CSS can cause flashes of unstyled content and also prevents us from making use of any caching we'd like to instill. So let's start off with a similar configuration to the one we created in the last video. If you're just jumping in now, you can download the project setup through the git repo linked in the video description. You'll see that our config file is set up to take an app.js file and output its contents into a build.js file. We have CSS and SAS loaders in place, and we're telling Webpack to watch for any changes that we make. Now, if we run Webpack in the terminal, you'll see we receive an error message, and this is because we never downloaded any of the loaders required for Webpack to function. All of the loaders and packages you'll need for this video are specified within the package.json file. So to install them, all you have to do is run either yarn install, or if you're using npm, you can run npm install. It all depends on which package manager you'd like to use. With these packages installed, we can head on over to our terminal and run webpack. And you'll see this time, it's compiling our app.js file into bundle.js as expected. If we view this on over in our browser, open up our inspector, and view what's inside of our head tags, you'll notice that our CSS is being inlined. But as I mentioned, as our CSS file starts to grow, we're more prone to flashes of unstyled content, and our load times will be longer than usual, as we can't cache the inline CSS. So how do we get Webpack to output this CSS into a separate file? Well, with the Extract Text Webpack plugin, of course. To make use of this, we're first going to need to download it. Let's search for Extract Text Webpack in Google. And we're going to head on over to this Git repo, the first result. And if we scroll down a bit, you'll see that this is the official Extract Text Webpack plugin for Webpack 2. So as of this recording, Webpack 2 is currently in its beta phase. If you're looking to use Webpack for a production-ready app, you may want to stick with version 1 for the time being. But since Webpack 2 will eventually be the de facto version of Webpack and should be released within the near future, we're going to stick with version 2. And if we check out our package.json file, you'll see that we already installed Webpack 2 when we ran yarn or npm install, so no worries here for now. Looking back at the extract text repo, you'll notice that there's no install script given in the readme. So we're going to cancel out a webpack and install this with yarn add extract text webpack plugin at 2.0.0 beta.4 dash dash dev. Quite a mouthful. Um, if you're using npm, you can install a plugin with npm install extract text webpack plugin at 2.0.0 beta.4 dash dash save dev. I just prefer to use yarn since it's a bit faster and its commands are more succinct when comparing it to npm. So now that we have the package pulled in, we can go ahead and make use of it within our config file. We are going to say whenever a CSS file is required within app.js, use extract text webpack plugin to place it in its own separate file. So the first thing we need to do is pull in the extract text plugin by requiring it at the top of our config file. And we can do that by typing const extract text plugin is equal to require and then extract text webpack plugin. With the plugin being pulled in, we then need to specify what we want to extract. So we are going to say when Webpack comes across the SCSS file during compilation, run an extracting loader on the existing loaders we already have listed out here. And we can do that by wrapping our existing loaders within an extract text plugin dot extract method.
Within this extract loader, we then need to specify what other loaders should be ran on our SCSS files before they are extracted. So we are going to create a loader property and assign our current loaders to it. Since we're exporting our CSS to a separate file, we don't need the style loader to apply our styles in line anymore. We only have to put our CSS and SAS loaders here, so we can get rid of that and list it as our fallback loader in case our CSS extraction fails. So when Webpack compiles app.js, if an SCSS file is being required within it, Webpack will run the following loaders, transform the SCSS into CSS, and then extract the browser readable CSS using this extract text plugin. Now that we have our CSS being extracted, we just need to specify a location for it to be placed. And we can do this by creating a plugins property for our config file. Let's assign an array to it and then create a new instance of the extract text plugin with our CSS destination as the plugin's constructor argument. So dist slash style dot CSS. With our config file updated, we can go ahead and run Webpack in the terminal. And now if we check our dist folder, you'll see that we have an exported version of our CSS. And if we want to use this within our project, all we need to do is head on over to index.html and then import the new CSS file with a link tag. View this in the browser and you'll see that our CSS is being linked rather than inlined. So that wraps things up for this video. In regards to learning more about Webpack, I plan on covering how to implement an auto prefixer for your CSS so you no longer have to manually type vendor prefixes such as dash moz, dash webkit, or dash ms. So stay tuned for the next video everyone and I'll see you there. Later.